Well, g'day curd nerds, and welcome to the wrap-up video for the Cheese A Day Challenge. It's been a long time coming, it's uh, 10 days into March already. Uh, should have done it on the 1st of March, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So, we're going to talk about the top five, the bottom five uh, cheeses that I tasted during the Cheese A Day Challenge. And also, just a little bit of the... Um, uh, the statistics, uh, how it affected the channel doing the Cheese A Day Challenge as far as viewership and views and that sort of thing goes. Just thought that'd be interesting to add into the end. So also remember that this was not a sponsored video. I went and purchased all of the cheeses from my uh, YouTube earnings uh, during the Cheese A Day Challenge. So uh, the bill came in quite hefty. I think I nearly spent about uh, $300 on cheese maybe a little bit less uh, but uh, yeah it was what it was it was uh, a really good challenge that i really enjoyed um, bringing to you uh, curd nerds and basically it was really to expand my own taste palette to help me on my uh, future cheese making journey to see what cheeses i could possibly make that would replicate some of those uh, some of those cheeses that I might, that I tasted during the Cheese A Day Challenge. So the top five are, and drum roll please, were uh, Roquefort on day two of the challenge, and I gave that a nine out of ten. The Shaw River Buffalo Mozzarella on day three, and I gave that a ten out of ten. The Meredith Dairy Marinated Goat Cheese, which was on day seven, and I gave that a 10 out of 10. The King Island Smoked Cheddar on day 20, and I gave that a nine out of 10. And finally, the Gorgonzola Dolce, uh, which was on day 22 of the challenge, and I gave that a nine. So those were my top five cheeses out of the 28 cheeses that I tasted. Uh, it just so happens that one, two are imported cheeses and both of them are blue cheeses, which is the Roquefort and the Gorgonzola. And the other ones are local uh, cheeses, probably within 160 kilometres of where I live, uh, which is roughly 100 miles. So the Shaw River Buffalo Mozzarella, the Meredith Dairy Goat's Milk and the King Island um, uh, Smoked Cheddar uh, are all fairly local to me. Absolutely amazing cheeses. If you haven't tried real Buffalo Mozzarella, then I highly recommend that you go and try the Shaw River Buffalo Mozzarella. It is just amazing. Amazing flavour, amazing texture, uh, just really, really good. Uh, I even used the rest of it on a pizza and it melted, uh, uh, the, the, the way it melted in, you cut little rounds and it just melted and oozed all over the pizza. Uh, not like that yellow pretend mozzarella that they make in, um, in factories. So this was real mozzarella. The Meredith uh, Dairy Marinated Goat Cheese was just amazing, blew my mind. The subtle flavour and the, the flavour of the spices and herbs that they put into the, um, into the marinade, the olive oil and the, the uh, canola oil which was just really, really good. And the smoky flavour of the King Island smoked cheddar uh, just blew my mind. It was really, really nice. Uh, and the Roquefort, first raw milk um, blue cheese that I ever tried, absolutely delicious, amazing stuff. And the Gorgonzola Dolce, uh, well, it uh, doesn't compare with any other blue cheese that I've ever tasted, and it was actually very delicious. So they were the uh, top five. So the bottom five, <laughs> and probably no, um, no surprise to anybody, was in no specific order, the South Cape Cream Cheese Cracked Pepper. That processed cheese was absolutely... I didn't expect it to be that bad. Um, anyway, that's my personal taste. Um, I gave it a 3 out of 10, and that was appeared on day 6 of the challenge. Uh, the next cheese was um, the Nissi Danish Feta. I think that they were trying to make something out of something that it wasn't. 
that was on day 11 and I gave that a 5 out of 10. Uh, the Audi washed rind on day 15 was very disappointing. Uh, it didn't taste like a washed rind cheese at all. It tasted more like a camembert um, or a, a petite brie. So that was no good at all. I was expecting a big flavour burst. Just wasn't there. The Tellagio by um, Bello Metti, I think that's the company that made it, on day 23, gave it a 5 out of 5 just because it stunk like dirty diapers. Um, and the flavour was not much better, really. It grew on me as I ate a little bit of it, but just wasn't the cheese for me. Hopefully, fresh Tellagio would taste a lot better. And finally, the Mersey Valley pickled onion cheese just wasn't for me on day 25. I gave that a 5 out of 5. And hence, you would have seen me make Cotswold cheese recently um, to try and uh, make a much better uh, version of the pickled onion cheese with lots of extra bits and more flavour uh, and more cheesy flavour not just pickled onion flavour. So those were the bottom five South Cape, Danish Feta, Audi Washed Rind, Tellagio and the pickled onion cheese all on the bottom on the list. So all the ones in between so the other um, 18 cheeses were okay they were good. Um, they weren't uh, anything exceptional they were delicious don't get me wrong but uh, they certainly didn't hit the top five or the bottom five uh, and I know this is a very subjective rating system uh, but it's my personal taste that's what I tasted that's what I thought of the cheeses so you'll probably be very happy to know that I'm going to continue the cheese a day challenge on a weekly basis so I've got to come up with a new name for it. Maybe keep calm and eat cheese. I did a little, uh, I think, three different videos a long time ago um, under the banner of uh, keep calm and eat cheese. Um, so I'm going to continue that on a weekly basis uh, and uh, put that up uh, uh, for your viewing pleasure. And uh, just to expand everybody's palate and, and mine, well, my palate especially, and everybody's... Um, perception of these cheeses that I've never tasted before. So, that's cool. Now, some of the stats during February on the channel um, kind of surprised me. Um, subscriptions were down during February compared to January, 57%. So there were a lot of people who unsubscribed from the channel because of the uh, Cheese A Day Challenge. I think they were there either for the taste test, the, the real cheese making videos, the tutorials, um, and just weren't interested in the cheese a day challenge, but no big deal. Um, I'm glad all of you have hung around and are still watching the channel. Uh, watch time was down uh, from 2.8 million minutes uh, in January down to 2 million, which is an 18% drop. Uh, and views were down 14% down to... Uh, 335.9 thousand video views um, for the month of February so down 14% on January so viewership down however more and more subscribers versus non subscribers actually watch the videos which is a great thing so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel then please do so so you get informed about all these cool videos that are coming up we've got lots of videos in the pipeline uh, we've got taste tests coming up for the cheeses that I've made myself and some more video tutorials of cheeses that I've never made before and a couple of reruns. I'm also thinking of redoing Stilton, um, similar to uh, Cotswold that I made the other day. Uh, and I've also got a uh, Shropshire Blue in post-production at the moment. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds. I hope this was of some benefit to you. If you didn't agree, with uh, my assessment of the top five and the bottom five then leave a comment down below if you did agree or you think i missed one then uh, also leave a comment that would be absolutely fantastic don't forget to give it a thumbs up um, or a thumbs down if you didn't like the wrap up well thank you very much for watching curd nerds and i'll see you next time mm -hmm.